ko te aroha ki ngā tangata o te ao ko te aroha ki ngā tangata o te ao ka nui te mihi ki te mana whenua o te rohe nei we extend our gratitude to the people of the Kingdom of Thailand. Kia tau ngā mana ki tanga a te mea ngaro, ki runga ki tēnā ki tēnā o tātou. Let the strength and life force of our ancestors be with each and every one of us. Kia mahia te hua mā ki hiki. Kia toi te kupu, toi te mana, toi te aroha, toi te reo Māori, so that our words, spiritual power, love, and language are upheld. Kia tuturu ka whakamaua, kia tīna, tīna. Haumie, huie, tākie. Permanently fixed, established, and understood. Forward, together. A tribute to Alfred Hill. Little Red Book, how romanticise the notion that Little Red Book. Syllables gathered from the wind now, but echoes from the lips of indigenous women. How romanticise the notion. Symphonies crafted from the stories of a people preceding time before tongues were cut. Symphonies crafted from the stories of a people, a people soon to be silenced. Echoes whispered through song, a glow from flickering lanterns. Echoes whispered in darkness to remember, to remember, must remember how romanticised the notion. Where once they told their stories through yours, you told ours, Alfred. Ingari, he ha'u Pray tell, Alfred. Tell me of your story. Speak to me not of successes, not of accolades or tours. Speak to me of the time you shared with our people, of the memories that you wove throughout your scores. Speak to me about marketeti, Alfred. Dreams, desires shared over steaming cups of tea. Speak to me about Charles, Alfred. Space shared with our ancestors and all that you did see. Images preserved on Goldie's canvas. Words captured in your little red book how romanticised the notion. Speak, speak to me of the children at Whanga Marino and the words of beauty and support that you shared. Keep on learning your crafts, your weaving and your carving, you said. And we did, Alfred. And we do. The Māori culture should never be forgotten, you said. The Māori culture should never be forgotten. Must remember, must remember how romanticise the notion. Māra Māori laid in ground, famed for poi play. Far on the winds, her name's blown, dusky, lithesome, fay. I wonder if in your words does lay their truth, that little red book, how romanticise the notion. Thank you. 
Voyage by A.R.D. Fairburn. We bought and sold debentures and backed some risky ventures. We ran up Gothic churches. We leased with right of purchase. We organized the workers and built colossal towers. We sent our wives some flowers and haunted ladies' bowers. And hid behind the curtain, we bore the white man's burden. We courted in the meadows, we slaughtered in the ghettos. We hunted through the gutters, the ghost that snarls and mutters. We castigated charters, we patronized the artists. We locked the slaves in hovels and wrote them into novels. We sent the times each morning a solemn word of warning. We rode beneath the rainbow, we read of Blake and Benbow, we happened on the notion of sailing on the ocean, and now, like Alexander, we seek fresh worlds to squander. The voyage, a response. One hundred years in the future, your words reopen sutures, another place, another time, revisit depictions shared through rhyme, and the gutters that you spoke of now flow grey on stolen land, and the artists that you patronise still pick locks of shackles where we stand. Leases with right of purchase and their ill-intended premise are now tied within your system, a treaty redress crafted prison. You still build colossal towers rightly enslaved into your novels. White man's burden still claim powers held by loud and suited fossils. The ladies' bowers that you haunted for child upon child to create us, where we plant flowers that you flaunted, sent to your wives in love and lust. And now we ride atop the rainbow. We don't speak of Blake and Benbow. We read Melvin, Tufare and Baker. We read Grace, Takitimi and Huda. And now we ride atop the rainbow and never mind your Blake and Benbow. We read Melvin, Tufari and Baker. We read Grace, Takitimi and Huda.
Jerusalem by James K. Baxter. If heaven gives me this old house by a river, it is not for myself, but for the purpose of peace. As the thunder and rain of spring makes green things waken, a fence of poplar leaves between us and the hill who is our mother, or the chestnuts we gather in autumn where the earth is where again. In our dreams it may happen, the dead return again. As if the earth spoke to us because time is a river on whose bank in ignorance the tribes gather with emblems of battle yet desiring peace. The fathers instruct us from their holy hill so that the warrior soul may waken. In winter with a heavy wind I wake and wait for the sun to lift the fog again that bind Jerusalem like a bridegroom above the hill. He touches with blades of fire the waves of the river like the body of a woman. Our words are of peace. This is the house where the wounded children gather. Peace is the language of the pongas on the hill, not for growing any game. These images I gather as eels waken in the darkness of the river. The times are like some rough and roadless hill we have to climb. I do not hope to gather hairs in the winter or halt the flow of the river. Buried in sludge, the souls of who begin to waken and know themselves. Our peace can't patch a game that canoe is broken. Yet all men value peace. A tribute to James K. Baxter. She sits alone, but she is not weak. She lies alone, but she is not lonely. She walks alone, but she is never really alone. She carries their legacy, the ancient ones, inked into her chin, ingrained in her soul, beads woven in the very fabric of her creation. They guide her as she walks barefoot down gravel roads, over mountains, through the realm of the forest gods. In our dreams it may happen that they visit. Time is a river and we stones forged from our earth mother lay. Carried with current ebbs and flows as life wraps around us, over us. The warrior soul never slept. Displaced perhaps, dormant perhaps. I think they would be proud for today, she has risen. Ancient vibrations through the eyes of the children, trickling off the tongues of their mothers, callous on the hands of their fathers as they carve kurawarako just as their fathers' fathers once did. We still gather with emblems of battle. We still desire peace. We still stumble barefoot along the rough and roadless hill. We still climb, we will climb. Our souls begin to waken as we begin to know ourselves. Built on the bones of our ancestors, living by the knowledge of our elders, teach me the ways of the old ones, of those who navigated the winds, the tides, the stars, of those who lived off the land and who loved her. Strength is what we are born from, growth what we are destined for. Broken be the systems, not the canoe. Peace is still the language of the ponga on the hill, game but a noxious growth winding up its trunk. The wounded children still gather. We found ourselves through each other. They have forgotten the hill is our mother. The fruits of her labour now are trade to be bartered and no longer her love. We still value the peace they speak of. Yet the journey is taking some time.
A tribute to Professor Ritchie. Together, past and present dance in honour of the past and present, he presents the past to the present as his gift to us. He, weaver of energy, he, channeler of ancient sounds, homage paid to them, them, creators of the soundscape of the days of old. Through music, we inherit the truth. Lift me from the realities of life, grant entry through portal to unknown realms of sonata, guided by emotion that is ours and ours alone. On Dante, we meditate on passing time, exploration of the temporal nature of our existence. Ha ki roto, breathe in. Ha ki waho, release. Lull me into a daydream state so that I may close my eyes and revisit people and places I never held tightly enough so that my spirit may dance with theirs just once more. Sweet sounds drift, kisses float into air above transversing time, just close enough to feel the breath of each chord as it dissipates softly to make way for the next just close enough to catch the last sweet sound that flows from the waterfall of creation before embracing the next. Movements sing, sweeter than the tui bird, softer than the berry of the meadow, lighter than the air of dampened soil after the spring rain. Inhale the beauty of what came before, exhale the breath of life. Notes sing in their hands a love story, the love story we only ever dreamed of dreaming and still dream of. Craft the story of my life, Professor, in 36 bars so that I may bring light to those who came before, who carved light before, honouring memory through vibration of energy. He, teller of stories, he, weaver of magic, we all need a little magic sometimes. Professor Ritchie, you, sir, are the weaver of magic. we urbanised, so began the birthing of the generations of lost. I was the product of the generation of lost. A generation of children, lineage stolen through legislation, just longing for our place. For acceptance in a world that told us we needed to conform to matter. There is healing in knowing who you are and where you come from, and for many of us this is a lifelong journey regardless of race. There is healing in being supported when you don't know who you are and where you come from yet. There is healing in our stories, there is power in our voices, and our voices shall be silenced no longer. There is healing in our stories, there is power in our voices, and our voices shall be silenced no longer. Te Kuri Pango, the black dog. Why do we call it a dog when stumbling blindly throughout this fog is not reminiscent to man's best friend? It is rather the Tanifa o te po, the monster of the darkness. This Tanifa does not discriminate. Its hate does not differentiate based on your sex or race, the place you call home, your bank balance or your chromosomes. This monotone syndrome will engulf your life force and force you to your knees. What does it look like? There are no broken bones or external symptoms or signs, no prism of crimson flowing outward from within, just victims confined within invisible paradigms. It looks like your builder, your plumber, your dentist, relentless in conquest, it's sly and inventive, 
mask on a man who was drowning, no bottom in sight, engulfed in a torrent in a sea filled with fear and an onslaught of currents in a realm filled with his tears. And still he stands. It's the girl at the corner store, the lady on the bus, your local school teacher with whom your children you trust, and inside she suffers, she can't breathe, she's constricted, no rationale of thinking can prohibit the interlinking of what's inflicted. And still she stands. It's the man here tonight, at the back of the crowd, broad shoulders well respected with an invisible storm cloud, and this morning he contemplated taking his life, mindset segregated and weighted within this tiny far coerced, he'd not think twice. And still he stands, it's your sister, your mother, the lady next door. And she's trapped within self, her hands battered and worn, and she's tattered and torn as she claws an attempt to heal wounds. She's forlorn and undated with contempt for herself. And still she stands. It's your loved one in a vicious cycle of frustration, anger, and regret. And a preset palette of shades of grey indebted to an injured mindset. And still they stand. It looks like almost all of us at some stage within our lives, and I don't have a magical cure, but I do know within darkness it thrives. You do not need to harden up. Yes, it's okay to talk. You are not alone with the journey you walk, nor the sum of the total of your thoughts. It looks like me, the woman standing before you on this platform, who channels, channels her darkness to brainstorm and perform, turning her inner deformities into an art form. And still, I stand. It looks like us, and together we stand. From birth, we are conditioned to think this way or that. The products of an environment forged from entitlement, you see this box, you must fit within it, and that is that. In a world where respect is a concept lost on many, in a world where neglect, they demanded equality, yet all I had to offer was me. What is me? What are we? Who are we? I surmise that this is the demise of democracy, for what you see is me, but what defines me? Society? They categorize and say that I am one or the other. So one is black and one is white, and yet we stand as brothers. Torn between my whenua and whakapapa foreign to me, I stood and bled with the pain of this history unknown to me. Yet all along, I carried my ancestors on my back throughout my journey. Gracefully, gracefully faithfully, carry the prestige of generations before me. Bigotry prohibited me from performing, forced me into conforming just to fit in, just to be like them, just to be liked by them. Society tells me, level up and be the best I can be. But statistically, I'm a minority. Set is forced upon me of what should be, not what could be, not what would be, but what will be. You dare impede me. Oppress me culturally, suppress my legacy, and use that to define my identity? Then you will see. For I am me. I am wahine Māori. 
I don't fit within their scope. In this chasm, I can't fathom or conceptualize this idealistic life, so I make change, so I made change. I crossed their plains and rearranged this disdain taught reality ingrained within my mind. And what did I find? Found all of you. And you found all of me. Seeds born of love, nurtured with light, destined for greatness. I walk barefoot over mountains, I challenge that I don't believe in, and I fight for that in which I do, and you can too. Reprogram your mindset. Your mind was set, but you can change it. Refuse to neglect. Refuse to conform to their games. Abstain from that that doesn't make you happy. And embrace that. It does. You are beautiful. You are enough. For within you burns a light so bright it burns like the stars our ancestors used to navigate throughout the night. Never lose sight of the beauty. Never lose sight of the power that is you. Reclaim your power. You have the aptitude, just adopt an attitude immersed in gratitude, surround yourself in the Modi, bask in the energy of those you resonate with daily, and you will be free. Set goals, smell flowers, appreciate the beauty of a sunset, give within your capacity to give, to those you know, and those you haven't met yet. Tell loved ones you care, speak what's on your mind, hold the hands of those with fear, and guide them with your shine. Empowerment is a taonga that we can be gifted or we can gift. And your only requirement in obtaining this is for your mindset to shift. I bid farewell with high vibration and to you all a future so bright. Never forget the power in which you hold. Seeds born of love and light.